How many know that the just man falls seven times but rises back up? There's only one that's righteous that's perfect, and that's Jesus Christ. That's why he came and died, shed his blood on the earth, so that we might become the righteousness of God through him. Amen? It's by grace we are saved, not of our works. Amen? Grace we are saved through faith, right, for good works. Catch that? So good works don't get us to heaven, but what does get us to heaven is putting our faith in Jesus Christ. You know, we're going to be talking about three saints in these uh, last few weeks. We've talked about uh, Genesis chapter 4 about Abel, Cain and Abel. You remember the story about Cain and Abel? And we also talked about Enoch who walked with God, and God, he walked so close with God, God, he didn't even taste death. He just, God just took him. And then the last week we talked about Noah and how he walked with God. And so we're going to be referring to these Old Testament saints who are now heroes in the New Testament so we can look in the New Testament and see what they did so that we can, they're examples for us to be able to, how many know you have to have faith, amen? Faith, you hear about faith, what is faith and, and why do we need it and how do we obtain it, how do we get it? Well, let's look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, and, and we're going to be going over this here this morning. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. See, faith is substance. You can't see it, but it's real. It's not seen. Faith is substance that can create things that you what? Hope for. You got to have hope or faith can't create. Right? Hope is, 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 is the address that faith can create. I always think of it like this way. So you're going to build a house. So you're going to build a house and you have it out here on a piece of property. And that's your hope. You got the plans. And you got the dimensions. You got everything. That you got the, the site plans. You got the design plans. You got the detailed plans. And so you have this hope of building a house. Well, let's say like the lumber yard, let's say Home Depot, is likened to faith. It has all the material. It has the 2 before 4s It has the 2 by 12s It has the 2 by 10s It's got roofing materials. It's got insulation. It's got rebar, wire mesh, everything for you to be able to build what you hope for building in this house is as a Home Depot. Now, here's the thing, folks. Some of us say we have faith, but it doesn't, doesn't work because we lost our hope. See, it's like this. I've heard it said like this. Faith and hope are like two oars, right? What happens if you've got one oar in the water? What are you doing? You're not going across the lake. You're not going to the destination that you want, you desire, but you're spinning in circles. So you have to have both your oars in the water. You have to have hope, right? Hope is the address that faith can bring substance to. So don't lose your hope. How do you keep from losing your hope? You're here today. You're, you're, you're being built up. You're being edified. You're hearing the word of God. That's how you, you gain your hope. You get your hope. You get around people. Listen, when you get down, see, the enemy is after your hope, so your faith won't work. What good is faith if, see, hope is what puts a demand on your faith. That's what puts a demand on your faith. So you can sit there and say, oh, I have faith. I have faith. But if you'd lost your hope, Faith won't create. So faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's not seen, but it's very real. Jesus told Nicodemus, he said this, he says, Nicodemus says, how do you, how do you get in the kingdom of God? Jesus says, you must be born into it. You have to be born again. Nicodemus says, do I enter my mother's womb a second time? He says, no, no. He says, those things of the spirit are spirit, things of flesh are flesh. He says, the spirit is like the wind. You can't see the wind, but you feel the effects of the wind. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know where it's going, but it's there. That is how faith is. Faith is spiritual. Faith is spiritual. Amen? If you believe that this morning, say amen. For it, by faith, the elders obtained a good testimony. Got a good report. What we're reading about the Old Testament saints in Genesis became the heroes of faith in the New Testament in Hebrews chapter 11 because they had faith and it gave them a good testimony. It gave them a good report. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by what? 
the word of God. God spoke and it came into existence. And it was good. Amen. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Only God can just stand out and just say and just speak and it comes to, to existence. Amen. That's the kind of faith we need to have. Believe in God. It's, it's an assurance that what God says that I can bank on this, that I, no matter what's happened on in my reality, the promises of God are yes and amen. Do you have that kind of faith? Do you have that kind of faith? Do you have the kind of faith? How do you get faith? How do you obtain faith? Faith comes by hearing the what? Does faith come by hearing the opinions of people? People in the know? No, faith comes, right? Comes to you when you hear the word of God. Amen. And that's what you have to do. That's what you have. You got to get into God's word for your faith to be built up. How many know how important faith is? This is not just something we just, you know, play church with. The just shall live by what? Faith. The just shall live by faith. Faith without works is what? Hallelujah. Boy, this, is a, this church knows it, don't they? Faith without works is dead. Now, here's three heroes of the Bible. Hebrews chapter 11, we're in verse 4 now. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was the righteousness God, testifying of his gifts, and through it, being dead, still speaks. Isn't that good? Faith. So Abel worshiped by his faith. Everybody say worship. How's your worship here this morning? How's your worship? Well, I hope it's great here because this is a place where the environment believes in worship, right? If you don't believe in God, you're still going to fake it here because the environment is, is speaking God things. Amen? How's your worship? What does it mean to worship God? It means to praise God. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praises. It's, 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 it's believing in God. It's saying, I will bless the Lord at how many times? All times. Not when times are just good, but the good, bad, and ugly. You bless him at all times. You praise him. You praise him because you reverence God. You it's humility that you reverence God. Abel was in the hero of faith because of his worship. How many know when you give and you tithe and you give your first fruits to God, that's worship? Abel was given a sacrifice. He brought it to God. And it was counted him as righteousness because of his faith. Amen? Enoch walked with God. His faith was shown by he walked with God. How's your walk with God? Is it close? Can you hear God? I'm not talking about an audible voice. I don't think I've ever heard an audible voice from God. I don't think I've ever, I hadn't heard angels singing, you know, and I, I, none of that. But I am close enough to walking with God that I know his impressions. I know he bears witness. I know the nod of God. You know what I'm talking about? Where God says, do this. Go that way. I know God. I've walked with God. How's your walk with God? We walk by what? Not by? How's your walk? Is your walk good? Is it close? Me and Dana, we walk in the evening sometimes in our neighborhood. And as we walk, we walk stride side by side. She's not going to be way ahead of me trying to talk to me. Right? Or I'm not going to be behind, you know, or she's not going to be behind me. We walk stride by side by side, stride by stride. And so when you walk with God, are you in close proximity enough to hear him? To know him? To fellowship with him? Are you only walking with God on Sunday mornings? Are you only worshiping God on Sunday mornings? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Acknowledge him and he will what? Direct your paths. We learned that Noah walked with God. 
We learned last week in Genesis chapter 6, the whole world was evil. When no one was walking with God, Noah was walking with God. That's some pressure, right? Well, that's some endurance, right? Because I know some of you, you go, you go to your jobs, you go to places, you're pressured by different things, different people to do things. How's your walk with God? Well, that's some endurance, right? For Noah to be able to walk with the God when no one else was walking with God. And by the way, God was talking to Noah and not talking to anybody else. Look at this. Look at this in Genesis chapter, I mean, Hebrews chapter 11. It's verse 7. By what? Noah being divinely warned of things not yet seen. See, you know how close he was? God's like, hey, Noah, this world is evil. I'm fixing to play wipeout. Don't you want to be that close to God that he warns you? He was divinely warned of God. That's walking close with God. See, some of us can't hear from God because we're too far away from God. If you're walking with God, I can guarantee you God's walking with you. He says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. If God seems far away from you, guess who's walked away? Not God. Guess who? Us. Being warned by God. He moved with godly fear, reverence. Boy, churches need that today. Amen? Reverence God. Don't take him cheaply. Don't call him the man upstairs. Come on now. He is your Lord. Elohim. God. Yahweh. We're sitting there talking about him like a leash on a pet. You got a pet on a leash. You know? Treat him cheaply. We wouldn't have breath in our own lungs if it weren't for the Lord. Amen? We didn't make ourselves, the Bible said. He made us. He created us. Hallelujah. You can't even take your, you know, the fool says there's no God. You can't even take your next breath without the Lord. Amen. You can't even stop breathing right now without the Lord. Hallelujah. He walked with godly, he moved with godly fear. And he prepared an ark for the saving of what? By which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is according to faith. 120 years, build an ocean liner in your backyard. And you're saying, oh, I'm waiting on the Lord. Yeah, he's waiting on the Lord. 120 years. Never seen it rain. Didn't have Home Depot to go get the lumber. Didn't have saws and chainsaws. Didn't have any of that. Right? He had to grow the timber and cut the timber. God was specific. He said, make it out of gopher wood. And he gave the dimensions of a ship. It was like a football and field and a half long. Four stories high. And tells him to build it. And he's never seen rain before. Because the earth was watered from underneath. Peter says that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. So he was a shipbuilder in the day. And then in the evening he went and preached and witnessed God. And he had a one message sermon. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. Well, what's rain, Noah? I don't know. Never seen it, but it's going to rain. See, a lot of us think that if we're walking with God, it's going to be spelled out. We're going to know the blueprints. We're going to know every detail about it. How many know that sometimes faith don't make sense? Huh? God can cause you to do some things that you're like, man, I do not understand, but it's not for us to understand. It's for us to obey because Noah did everything that was commanded by God. And because of it, he was made righteous. He wasn't made righteous by his works. You say, oh, he was made righteous because he built a ship. No, 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 no. 
Noah found favor with God. That's the first time grace is mentioned in the Bible, Genesis chapter 6. See, it's by grace you're saved. It was by grace Noah was saved. It was by grace his whole family was saved. Not by works, lest a man should boast. But listen, you're saved by grace, through faith, for good works. You ought to have some good works. Because James says it's like this, faith without works is dead. Why does it profit a man if he says he has faith and he doesn't have any works? Right? He says, you say you show, show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. See, faith always has a corresponding action. If you thought a tornado was fixed to level this place, heading this way, would you just be sitting there like this? If you really believe that, what would you be doing? Crawling under, taking cover. See, a lot of us sit there and we say, oh, I agree that Jesus is Lord. Yeah, but your actions speak something different. You know what it says in Matthew chapter 7? It says, there are going to people on the day of judgment say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Preach. Did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we? And Jesus said, depart from me. I never knew you. Whoa. How's your worship? How's your walk? How's your work? See? Abel worshiped by faith. Enoch walked by faith. Noah worked by faith. How's your work? Oh, my worship's good on Sunday morning. But by, what about the rest of the week? Faith without works. Can you imagine working on a ship for 120 years and being called a preacher and not save anybody but your family? Do you think he, he's the poster boy of endurance? How many of you know you need endurance? Huh? Let's look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35 and 36 real quick. Therefore, do not cast away your what? You know, people quit coming to church. You want people to just give up. You know, we got a, 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 a world that applauds quitting. I just quit. Tough gets, gets tough and they just quit. Quit our marriages, quit relations, quit, quit, quit jobs, quit everything. Quit churches, quit everything because they get offended. Don't cast away your confidence, which has a great reward. For you have need of what? What's that say? Didn't say faith. You had faith the size of a mustard seed. You could say this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. You should not doubt in your heart, but believe in the things that you say shall come to pass. You'll have whatever you say. You had that much. It's the endurance. The tenacity. The kingdom of heaven suffers violent, but the violent take it by force. We got to have violent faith. Amen. We got to have endurance. For you have need of endurance. So after you have done the will of God, did Noah do the will of God? For 120 years he did. He moved with godly fear. Even when it won his reality, was no rain. Do you think he ever got tired of cutting down gopher wood? Huh? It wasn't starting up the old chainsaw, right? The Husqvarna. No. Taking the OAC. Can you imagine doing that for 120 years? He, I'm, I'm sure that Noah at times says, I am tired of gopher wood. I am tired of doing this. But you know what he did? He moved with godly fear. He, reverenced, he blessed the Lord at all times. I'm tired of doing this, Lord, but I'm thankful for you. Amen. It's not raining, Lord, but I'm thankful for you. I, I'm, he's praising God through the tough times. What we need is to take a lesson from Noah and have endurance. How about stickability? Is that a word? Faithfulness, stickability, stick with stuff, huh? Let's go back here. Let, 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 I'm not through with that yet. For he had need of endurance, so after he had done the will of God, what happens? You receive the promise. 
Can you imagine the pressure of being a preacher and, and, and you know, you're working, building's boat, and everybody's laughing at you, saying, oh, man, there's old weird Noah. <laughs> Things are going to rain. It's never rained before. He's building an ark, and the closest water is 100 miles away. He says it's going to rain, mocking the pressure. But he made it to the heroes of faith, not because he built a boat. It's because he saved his family. He helped save his family. Amen. Real men lead their family. Amen. Real men don't send their wives to work and go play Xbox in the back room. Amen. Real men work. Come on now. Even when they don't feel like it. You think Noah and his, he must have been a good leader because his family was working with him. With the little hammers. And little, listen, one of the angels coming down with nails and helping to hammer. He had his family working because he had his family involved. Huh? Real men don't send their families to church. They lead them to church. Huh? Take them to church, mama. Where are real men at today? You got a question about the Bible? Go ask your mama. No. You lead. You're the authority of the house. You look it up. You study and show yourself and prove so you come to me. I'll give you, I'll give you the answer. Real men don't sire children. They father children. Amen? You got a world. Where's the man at? God asked Adam, where are you, Adam? Hiding. We got men that want to marry a wife to be their mama. No, that's back. That's back before. You got to have a bar mitzvah, folks. Grow up. Paul said, when I was a child, I, I thought childish things, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. You don't need a mama taking care of you. You had that. That's your wife. A man shall leave his mother and father, and cleave, pursue his wife. That's what we need to be doing. Hallelujah. That's some good preaching, Pastor Arthur. Amen. Where are men? Talk about endurance. Because if you do the will of God. Noah did everything God told him to do. He says, if you do the will of God, then you're going to receive the reward. How many know that without faith, it's impossible to please God? Huh? Well, I thought, Pastor Arthur, God loves me. Yeah, he loves you. Unconditionally. For God so loved the world. Didn't say he loved the church. So loved the world that he gave. He gave. But there's a difference between God's love and pleasing God. Making God do this. Smile. Happy with you. Without faith. See, he's in there and say, oh, I got faith, I got faith. But you don't have action? It's dead. It doesn't profit anything. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For you must know that he exists. Oh, I know the man upstairs. Even the demons tremble. They believe. But they're not submitted to God. They rebelled. You must believe that he exists and he's a rewarder. He's a rewarder that diligently seek him. Man, what a leader. Got his family in the ark. Right? How many times that you've been walking in faith and what God has promised you is not your reality that you're living in? He's Jehovah Jireh, my provider. And you're thinking, how can I feed my family of five with $10 this week? I've been there before. Spaghetti. <laughs> Hamburger meat. This tells me a few years ago. It might be a $20 bill now. And spaghetti sauce. I know. Amen. But you don't throw in a towel and you don't quit. 
He said, Lord, I bless you at all times. See, I thought Noah was probably doing that. He's hitting that gopher. He's like, I am tired of knocking these trees down and dragging them up and building a ship, and I've never even seen it rain. Mm. But if you endure, you're going to receive. If you do the will of God and you endure, because by faith and patience you receive the promises of God. Amen? By faith and what? Long suffering and endurance. 120 years. One day, Noah said, God said, get on the boat. And guess what you heard? Pitter, patter. Pitter, patter, pitter, 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 pitter. Here comes the rain. And the guy who looked like a fool, oh, he looks like he's got on now, right? Do you know that the ark is a picture of Jesus? I'm sure when Jesus was on the road of Emmaus, he was talking to two disciples, and he talked about Genesis. He says, that was me, I was the ark. The ark has one door. God said, put one door. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father but through that door. I stand at the door. Huh? How long are you going to let it rain? Are you ready? God is long-suffering. You know, Peter says that some people say that God is slack concerning his promises. He's not slack concerning his promise, but he's very long-suffering and merciful because he doesn't desire anybody to die without Jesus Christ. They had 120 years to repent. Moses, I mean, Noah spoke and said, repent is going to rain. Judgment is coming. Not one person, but his family did. They got on that ark, that one door. And let me tell you something. God controls the door. He controls the door when it shuts. How long is God going to be long-suffering with you? He said, only put one window. Did you know that? Look up. As in the days of Noah, did you know that? As in the days of Noah, so will the Son of Man return. But when it happens, look up, for your redemption draws nigh. Amen? It draws near. Do you know we're in those days? And the judgment waters that flood that earth... Didn't touch Noah and his family. Why? Because he was inside the ark. Are you hidden in Christ Jesus today? Huh? He says, I knock at the door. I stand at the door. Are you going to come in? Are you going to accept him as your Lord and Savior? You know that, that boat, God told him, seal it with pitch. On the outside and on the inside, seal it with pitch. That word pitch means covering. It means atonement in the Hebrew. How many of you know that you are sealed until the day of redemption? By grace you're saved. Through faith, you got faith. It ought to produce some good works. Oh, Pastor Arthur, I'm a Christian. Do we know you by your fruit? God cursed the fig tree. Jesus cursed the fig tree that didn't have any figs on it. Why, it should be producing figs, but it wasn't doing what it was supposed to do. And he cursed it. You will know them by their fruits. What's the fruits? Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, long-suffering. So what do we do, folks, with this message? Since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, we just read today, the heroes of faith. And by the way, men, if you're getting your children into the ark, you're bringing them to the church, God considers you a hero of faith. It's not about doing this spectacular feat. It wasn't about the boat. It was about getting their family saved. He made it into the heroes of faith because not only his endurance, but his family 
got saved. Since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Get our heads in the clouds, right? Think on things that are above. Huh? Since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let's throw off every weight of sin that easily besets us. And let's run the race. How many of you know I got a race? God's called you for a purpose, a plan. He didn't make you for fun. He made you with a purpose. You're here. You got air in your lungs because you're here with a purpose. He's got a plan for you. Let's run the race. Let's don't run somebody else's race. Oh, I like what they're doing over there. You run what God told you to do. Let's run the race that's set before us with endurance. There's that word again. Looking under who? That one window, right? Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. 